little bit of a See that? We got turbulence in the water. Here we go. And this is really simple. Oh my gosh. Oh, into the And um, so, and was your grandfather then also into uh, airplanes? How far back does this go? Because your father, like, epitomizes just creative, you know, engineering. Yeah, yes, my, I mean, his, his father was a doctor, and I don't remember him um, doing any, any um, sailplane flying, but, um, but my mother's father um, was, was into sailplanes and building primary gliders back when, back when you know, that's, what, that's what people flew, sort of the, you know, the early, right. early days of of sailplanes, really and so I think that's why my dad was kind of hanging out with him, and then my mom was there, so like, oh, I, I like see. this guy. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of serendipitous uh, yeah. relationship. Yeah. yeah, but the, and, and so, man, I'm not, um, yeah. I'm not really sure where my dad got, I think, I think it's, it was more like his personality, um, and he, he was um, the, just the, you know, the nature of their living situation. He, was, he spent a lot of time alone and had to entertain himself and found that he really liked making models and then also found that he really liked competition. Yes, and um, you told me that before. That he was very competitive. He's very competitive. Yeah, and I looked yes. at all the awards he's won. Oh. <laughs> Quite oh. successful. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. I mean, growing up, you know, down in the basement, there were just all these, all these trophies. And all this, all this stuff. I was like, that's weird. I can't, I can't imagine because I didn't have that competitive. I don't like, I don't like competition. <laughs> and um, but he, yeah, he really liked to win, and he liked to win by, um, by fig not by skill, because he didn't have skill. He wasn't he, like he wasn't a great sailplane pilot. He wasn't smooth, um, but he figured out how to how to understand what's going on with the air better than other people, and um, he came up with a few tricks that that now now are um, everyday stuff in sailplanes. But but for a while he had his own secret device that gave him um, insights that other people. The McCready ring. The McCready ring, yes. <laughs> yes, which is, it's, um... No, I got it! It's just, there's a, a variometer in the sailplane tells you how fast you're going up right. and down. And he, he designed a, a ring that you just you stick on, you know, around your variometer that's got a bunch of numbers on it, which tells you, when you're flying between thermals, how fast you should be flying based on how strong thermals are on a given day. Because they're sort of, you know, they're consistent strength during a day, right? And and um, and there's an optimum speed to fly between thermals, where if you go too slow, you're just spending all this time in the sink, and if you're going too fast, you're, you're really losing altitude too quickly. But there's an optimum speed, and it's going to be different on different days. So he made this adjustable ring, um, and and so then you just kind of you kind of match up, you know, as you're flying through sink, you match up your sink rate with the with an airspeed. Like that's that's the speed I want to go. Nice. So he was doing that. And he, he figured this out, and he was, you know, he did all the math calculations, everything, and then he kept it to himself for a while. <laughs> and now everybody, right, they're right. in all sail. Right. You said that. Uh, worry about the distribution. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm getting the free advertising. Yeah. So all I have to do is figure out how to make them yeah, at home, yeah, yeah, yeah. and right. because then I don't even have to find a manufacturer. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. make them at home and. Um, and so I just started doing that and, and came up with a design that, you know, I figured was about the right, yeah. the size that I wanted and the, the shape that I thought was the, um, the ideal shape for making it stable, um, but also flying, flying with a good L over D. And I made my own molds and cooked them in an oven at home to get that shape in there. Oh really? And uh, yeah, which was um, which was a real hassle. <laughs> yeah, and and I made so so I ended up um, 
Um, and, and I sold a couple thousand of those at a, a tremendous profit, which is the only oh. thing that made it worthwhile for okay. me. Okay. Um, well, but, pretty good. But then I used one of those and, and um, you know, went to Hong Kong. Uh, oh, with the toy company, okay. yes. and we go to the manufacturers, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and you know they'll they'll quickly make some prototypes or something, and then go in in detail, tell them exactly what it should be. That that I wanted I wanted kinks in the airfoil, you know, not a smooth rounded one, yep. and I wanted a squared off, square cut leading edge, not a okay. not a rounded or a oh, sharp okay. leading edge, to you know just to get it. So that the stall is as mellow as oh, possible. Oh, really? Oh, okay. That's yeah. what that's for. And, you know, in just the right shape and, and, and told them how light it had to be. And they're like, well, and I'm like, no, no. Uh, it has to be. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I, I can't remember what we came up with, but, um, you know, it was something like, like you know, it's got to be three grams for the wing and one gram for the nose weight. Okay. And that's what it has to be. Uh, oh, and, wow. uh, um, and so, so that's where that mold came from. Okay. And then anyway, they, so they produced it for a year, and then just stopped for I have no idea why. Hmm. And they still offer them online. I mean, Windrider. Yeah, and so, so the, so the Windrider guy, um, as far as I can tell, he must have got the actual molds. Oh, okay, um, okay, okay. Or, or maybe he made copies, but they look. I mean, they're exactly the same size and shape and everything. And. And I imagine, you know, he's a he's kind of a low budget operation, and, and so I just figured, well, he must have gotten the molds somehow. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, and so then he started producing them, and he came up with that really neat design for uh, yeah the, for the, the living wedge, wing, yeah, which is yeah. which is so nice for packaging and shipping. Something I thought that the the Hasbro or the Wowie people didn't. Um, they. They were yeah, it was a, a more overpackaged yeah, yeah, design. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. bigger, maybe. Yeah. Bigger. But it's a. I mean, it. It's sort of. It's the. The way their marketing is oriented. They. They aren't in the business of making a five dollar item. They. You know. They need to sell. Things need to retail. It's Thirty for, bucks. Yeah. That's why. That's why I got into kind of figuring out how to do it myself. So mm-hmm. I mean, all the rest of these designs that uh, I was gonna. You know, I I wasn't gonna try and knock it off and try and make a profit myself. I was gonna give away the idea, uh huh, <laughs> and try and make it as cheap as possible and yeah. just you know uh, because I thought that it was it's kind of a very you touch the air when you when you go with a paddle you're touching the air you're really connecting with flight in a in a in a way that um, you know, I, I mean basically I think. Mankind's flying species. I mean, uh-huh. <laughs> we need we need uh-huh. we have we need tools, but but we know how to do it, and we do. Uh, so kids should learn how to fly. You know, they should learn in a, in a safe environment. Everybody should learn how to, how to kind of. And that's that's one thing that Walk Along Glider is really good at. That's, yeah, you take to the air. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're, you know, it's it's human powered. It's 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 um. You're actually controlling it yeah. um, yeah. while while it's flying, and, and uh, which is it's a unique a unique yeah, combination. So it's going pretty steer. Why did you just like?